Okay, so we just talked about our three whisper keynotes. At the top, or the near top of the bass clef, we have G flat, G, and G sharp. Those three notes are the only notes you have to worry about with half whole, except for a really, really high note that you can look up when you get there. So those are the main half whole notes. After that register, we have um, the top line A, and then we're going to be leaving the bass clef. And in order to play these notes, we get to use what's called flick keys. So let's review from way back when we looked over all the different keys. And remember, these were our really low fingerings over here, all the way down here in the bass. But these guys over here, we've so far done a lot with the whisper key, and we already learned a C sharp earlier. But now we have these flick keys right here, okay? The first one is the A flick key, A, okay? Big mystery, that's the key that gets used with A. The next one is called the C flick key, or the high C key. And actually, this one gets used for not only C, but also B natural and B flat. Then we have our high D key, which actually is not on all bassoons. If you have a, a student level bassoon um, or one that you just found and it doesn't have this high D key, that's okay, uh, but it is preferable on really any instrument um, for any student who's serious about the bassoon. It's very helpful to have the high D key, but you can play without it. So this one is used just for high D, and that would be the note that sits on top of the first ledger line above the bass clef. So again, this was the A flick key for just A, top line A. Then we have the, the high C key for C, B natural, and B flat. And then we have the high D key, which is just for D, okay? So the reason they're called flick keys is because there's a technique called flicking. And that's where we actually just bump that key right as we play that particular note. So right as we play A, we flick or press with our thumb quickly the A flick key. Now what that does is it helps us respond in the correct octave. If you don't use the flick keys at all, you end up with sort of this cracking sound right at the beginning of your articulation. And what that is is the low octave of that note sounding for a split second before the bassoon jumps up. Now, the reason it's going to want to generally be up high is because we're ditching the whisper key, okay? So we've been on here for all of our low notes, all the way up through the three half whole notes. And now, as we go up higher, we can leave it, okay? So with our whisper key up, our left thumb is now free to flick and use the flick key right here. So let's go back and remember how to finger A. And the only difference now is we're not using the whisper key. So that's, since it's a natural note, it's probably just one of our regular, uh, using our basic seven fingers, we got one, two, three, four, five, gets us to A. Okay, remember from the top, it's open would be F, E, D, C, B, A. That's how I find that quick. So three fingers on top, two on the bottom is my fingering for A and I have my thumb off of the whisper key. I don't need to use the whisper key, but I will need my A flick key. So the, the idea is that you have these fingers down, and when you're not flicking, there's nothing else to do. It's just the fingers closed. But the flick key is there for us to press quickly as we play A. So now, B flat, same fingering as you already know from the lower octave, but no whisper key. So we have these two, two fingers still closed down here, and we use our B flat thumb key right here. So that fingering for B flat, just like you learned down low, works here too. And now we flick the middle flick key, or the one above the large A flick key, okay? So we've got our high C key, but I'll stop calling it that for now since it's used for three different notes. We had our A flick key for A, and now we move up right as we add our thumb to play B flat. So I'm on this higher flick key and I'm playing a B flat, and that same flick key operates for B natural, 
when I lift my thumb and my middle finger and just leave that first tone hole down. So this is the fingering for B, and I use the same flick key here, above the A flick key. Then I get to C. C is also this key. Remember, that was called the high C key. So C uses the same flick key. So there's three notes that apply to that flick key. And then finally D. And I use the top flick key. Now obviously flicking takes some practice and there's an exercise for practicing that technique in the back of the workbook. But let's just walk through those fingerings again and help our thumb here coordinate with the hand down here. So while we're fingering A, two fingers here, three fingers up here, and no whisper key, Find the A flick key. Boop, boop. Give it a little flick. And then B flat. We have to add a thumb above the pancake key. Now make sure you've now moved up to the flick key that applies to B flat. Flick, flick, flick. Now we lift our fingers, thumb and middle finger to find a B natural. Flick, flick, flick. The same flick key. And finally, lift a finger for C natural, just these three fingers, and flick, 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 that exact same flick key. Finally, we move up to the high D key, if you have one, and lift a finger for D. So these notes here would be considered the flick key notes, and beyond this, we actually switch into a new set of fingerings for our high register. So that's all you need to learn in this register. Now, hold on. Remember C sharp? We didn't talk about C sharp. So again, C sharp is a little bit of a problem. It's a little bit challenging. And it's not exactly the same as these other keys. The basic version of it is not that hard. Remember how there were three thumb keys that went down. I used the back or the underside of my thumb to press the D key. And then I used the tip of my thumb to press the C sharp and the whisper key at the same time. So all three of those together gave me the fingering for C sharp. Now, that included my fingers down for like C natural on the front. So these three fingers are down, and I use that. So I can actually use the exact same fingering and just remove the whisper key. Remember, at this register, we don't use the whisper key anymore because it's like a backward octave key. The whisper key helps us play low. So we don't want to play low right now. This is C, like C sharp, like uh, one ledger line above bass clef. So I've got one, two, three fingers down for low C sharp, just the two, just the two for a high C sharp, plus my three fingers in the front. It feels a little bit easier. Now, there's actually an alternate fingering here called long C sharp that we'll talk about, talk about a little bit later, and it replaces your D key all the way over here with some fingers down here in the bottom of this hand, okay? But for now, just think about it as the C sharp you learned before, three fingers in the front, and only two, whoops, only two keys in the back. And make sure you're hitting that C sharp key. Uh, it feels very similar to the A flick key right above that. So make sure that you're pressing the C sharp key and the, D, the long low D key all the way back under your thumb. So that gets us chromatically from A up to D. So let's try that. We have A, flick the A key, and then we have uh, B flat, add the correct flick key. Then we have B natural, add same flick key. And then we have C natural, same flick key. And now we need our C sharp. So we gotta bring our thumb down from where it was living on the, uh, on the flick key up here, down to the C sharp key, and get that long low D key, both together. So now with our fingers down up here, that's C sharp. C natural, use the flick key. C sharp, use these two thumbs at the same time. C natural, C sharp. And finally, we have to jump back up to D in order to play high D, lifting that finger and using our last flick key. 
That's it for this register. Practice those notes a little bit and watch the video again if you missed any of it. Okay, now we're getting up into the higher range of the bassoon, and it's important to remember the air embouchure balance when we're playing this instrument is what allows us to maintain the appropriate pitch. So <clears throat> it's easy to be pretty flat on some of these high notes if you don't have a developed bassoon embouchure or you're not used to the amount of air pressure that you need to generate. Try not to pinch down or bite down on the reed, and if you sound a little bit flat, it's okay. We're going to do the best we can to play this range of the bassoon. Uh, voicing is really important here again, and I only very briefly mentioned during half hole that we, we often voice do, D-O-H, or D-O-E, when we're in the half hole range, and that's because those notes tend to be sharp and do opens our mouth a little bit and lets off some of the lip pressure. That's also one of the reasons, remember, we had to add that key to our G fingering because G half hole is so sharp. Now, these notes, because they're likely to be flat, not only because of our playing technique, but because of the way the bassoon is built, we really need to voice do and make sure that that vowel is focused in the front of the mouth. Focusing the vowel is where we talk about placing the vowel where we feel the N in Minnesota. Do. Say that now. Do. Up there in the front of your mouth is where we want to imagine that vowel. So, give it a good amount of air. And by the way, if you've been playing your bassoon on a lot of these notes so far, you've probably accumulated some water, and especially you may have noticed a crackling or fuzzy sound, and that can be due to water in your vocal. Solution there is to just suck it out. That's familiar if you play a saxophone um, or, well, if you play the bassoon. So <clears throat> let's play these flick key notes. Starting on A, we have our three fingers down, no whisper anymore, and these two fingers here. So make sure our finger is on the A flick key. Take a nice full breath and play do. The goal is to flick the flick key right at the moment that you tongue the note, or right at the moment that the tip of the tongue leaves the tip of the reed to start the sound. We're trying to avoid any kind of low cracking sound. Let's try it twice in a row. Take a good breath. Again. But the basic idea is you press the key as you play it. Now, same thing goes for the next couple notes. We're going to try B flat. Let's try it twice. Add our thumb B flat right here with still two fingers down. No whisper. Need it for the flick key right here. Remember, do and use the center flick key or the one above the A flick key. Here's the second try. And then B natural, easy. Just the one finger down here. Same flick key. Once more. And finally, C, natural, same flick key. That one really wants to be flat. Give it a good air support. Now we need to try our high C sharp. So leaving the flip keys and coming down to the C sharp key, using the long D key and the C sharp key, plus our three fingers on the front, there's our C sharp. Let's play it twice. Once more. And finally, 
my high D. Two fingers plus the D flick key if you have one, the high D key. If you don't have one, just try it with the two fingers alone. Now, C-sharp was pretty nasty, and that's why there's an alternate fingering for C-sharp that we'll get to in the next portion of this course. For now, work on those flick key notes and make sure you know those fingerings. They're very much like the fingerings we learned in the first full octave, but no whisper key, and we have to know which notes use a flick key. Think do as you practice these notes. Good luck! and watch this video again if you need more help.